What's going on y'all, check me out here and in today's video we're gonna be talking about what is on my iPhone 13. It's been a while since I've done a what's on my iPhone video so yeah we're gonna talk about not only the apps I have installed, my current wallpapers, as well as some other settings in my phone that I still might be working on. So I've actually <laughs> simplified my setup. If you saw my previous what's on my iPhone video you know I had the custom icons and all of that but right now my setup is real simple <laughs> so i'm gonna have my little screen recording of what i'm doing on the phone over here but ultimately on my first page my mindset is i want access to the applications that i use the most and i have my widgets at the top of the page so currently in the top left what i've done is just drag a bunch of widgets of the same size on top of each other so i can just swipe through and access my spotify playlist or I can swipe through and access my Apple Music playlist because I do use both streaming services. So yeah, that's pretty much my like music widget. I also have a shortcut in there that when I tap on it, it's instantly going to run and play that specific playlist within Apple Music. To the right of that, I have like widgets more so in relation to like utilities and travel. Because I have been traveling a lot more lately, I do wanna know what time it is back home so that when I'm reaching out to my friends and family or just trying to handle some business things, that I'm properly synced up no matter where I am. Now beneath those two widgets, I have my calendar of choice, which is fantastic how. If you've been following my What's On My iPhone videos, this has been my go-to calendar app for years. Then next to that, I use the stock weather app. Outside of the stock apps, what else do I have in here? My YouTube studio app, so that I can quickly check on my you know, analytics, see how my videos are performing, as well as correspond with you all. And speaking of, definitely drop a comment down below and let me know what is your current favorite app that you're using the absolute most right now on your iPhone. Not the typical Instagram, things like that, like, a unique app, you know? Make sure you drop it down below because I'm interested to see. Before we go any further, I have to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Yahoo, because I don't know, this was news to me and it might be news to you, but they actually offer an extended warranty plan for a number of different devices. So they have something known as the Yahoo Plus Home Protection Plan, which is $15 a month and it actually offers quite a bit. It covers desktops, laptops, printers, TVs, gaming systems, DVD players, Blu-ray players, home theater systems, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled speakers, audio streaming devices and premium audio headsets, wearables, and a few smart home devices. Now the protection that you get for these devices is basically like a device replacement or repair or reimbursement. But the thing that I like that they offer that to me kind of sets them apart is that in addition to providing 24 seven phone support, they also offer the option for in-home visit if needed. But I like something like this because you don't have to keep Keep track of receipts or you know expiration dates of your warranties per device it's just everything is kind of nice and easy and seamless because it's all coupled together in one plan but in addition to that $15 plan they also have a $5 option known as their Yahoo Plus mobile protection plan so even if your phone is cracked or unresponsive the camera stops working or your Bluetooth isn't turning on it's still covered and a warranty plan in particular like this is good because you can protect your devices regardless of when you purchase them you know what me being a tech lover I'm constantly bouncing between different different devices from like my phones to my tablets to my computers so yeah I gotta I gotta get these set up proper <laughs> and if you're in the same boat I'm gonna definitely have a link down below for you so you can check it out and learn a little bit more about it on your own but uh yeah definitely worth looking into all right let's get back to the video next to the YouTube studio app I have my nighttime app this is what I use as my bedside clock just like fantastic how I've been using this app for years. <laughs> it's simple. You can adjust the brightness by simply sliding your finger up or down. You can tap on it and then hit the little gear icon and adjust some other settings about the app. But I have the basic version. I don't think I paid for it, but I wouldn't be surprised as well if I did. I can't remember. <laughs> but um, oh no, because it says unlock full version. So yeah, I just have the basic version and it gets me by. Then beneath that I have Telegram. Um, I still use Google Maps. I thought with iOS 15 <laughs> that it might convert me over to Apple Maps, but I'm still a Google Maps girl at heart, so <sighs> maybe one day. Then next to that, I have Amazon. If you know me, then you know how I feel about Amazon. I'm constantly shopping up there. So yeah, I'm definitely the type that goes down a rabbit hole and finds themselves with shipments coming in of things that they're just like, when, how? 
Did I order this? <laughs> now for my mail, I do use the mail app for like all of my email accounts, but for my business emails, I like to use Outlook. So I do use two different mail apps. I don't know, I just kind of like a clean view and I don't want to see all of the accounts that I have within one app when I really just want to look at like my business emails. So that's one of the main reasons I have them separated. But Outlook has some really nice features like you can flag emails, you can have custom signatures per account. But one of my personal favorite things is that you can actually schedule an email to be sent later. But next to the mail app, I have Instagram and then Notion. So Notion is like my notebook, so to speak, of data entry and just information that I need. So this is actually where I come and get organized for my business and future businesses that I have in mind for myself. So I have like different tabs here for like my YouTube page, weekly agenda. So yeah, I am still trying to start my Animal Crossing YouTube channel. It's just my issue, and I'm gonna just keep it real with y'all, is correctly setting things up so that I can record my gameplay. Like I'm having the absolute most trouble in getting that set up. So yeah, I, that's for another time, another video. Maybe y'all can hit me up on Instagram at techmeout, T-E-C-H-M-E-0-U-T, if you wanna help me. Yeah, that's, we're not even gonna go down that rabbit hole. But anyway, and looking at Notion for especially like my YouTube videos, I just love the way that you can enter things in. I, I will say it can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be, but I encourage you to keep it simple. <laughs> um, that was one thing I had to kind of learn the hard way, but Ultimately in here, what I have are my different videos that I'm working on. I also have templates for different types of videos. So I have a certain format when I'm writing the key points out for like a tips and tricks video versus a review video. And instead of always having to go in and create the look of that page, I have a template that I tap on and just input the information that I need. So I love that about this. There's also other things you can reference like the status of it, the video type, if there's a sponsor, the approval status, draft deadline, things like that. So like I said, you can be as simple, as robust as you want. But Notion is definitely one of those apps that can be its own video, so I'm not gonna dominate this video with it. But to the right of it, I have my travel folder. So like I said, I've been traveling a lot more lately. So I have some apps in here in relation to travel from like the airlines that I like to fly with and things like that. Then swiping over to the next page, I have my widgets again here. So I have my Ecobee widget because I do have a smart thermostat. I recently bought a house and I am currently filming in it right now. And that's the smart thermostat that I'm currently using. I'm still learning it, but so far it's nice. I love being able to adjust the temperature of the room from my phone. But next to that, I have my batteries widget. So all of my Bluetooth devices, as they get connected here, I can kind of see the battery life on them. And then beneath that, I have my deliveries app. So this is the app that I use to log all of my online purchases or just packages that I'm expecting. It's a simple layout and it automatically will detect if you have like a tracking number on your clipboard so that when you come in here, it'll say that it detects it and then ask you if you want to add it. But you also have swipe gestures as well so you can swipe in from the left and archive something and if you tap on an item it'll actually show you a detailed breakdown of it you know making its way across the map to you so you can know the different spots that it stopped and how many more days before it arrives but outside of that I got QuickBooks that's what I use to manage the finances for my business and keep track of those things I have a few credit card apps here AnyDo is an app that I was using for my to-do list it's decent I do like it but um I don't know, I just kind of fell back into using notes and reminders. So it's just sitting up here in the meantime of me figuring out if I'm gonna use it again or not. But those are most of the apps that I'm currently using right now. I will say something else that I have been doing on my phone that I think is worth mentioning is setting up focus modes. So one in particular I have like is the one that I'm actually using right now called recording. And I love the fact that I was able to set the icon to look like that because it just further illustrates to me visually that I'm in a recording mode. So ultimately what I've done for my, you know, recording focus mode is basically silence all notifications, all phone calls, like nothing can make it through on this phone when I'm in that setting. That way I don't get any accidental interruptions because if I'm filming, I'm kind of in my own zone and I don't want any distractions. Another focus group that I made was for briefings as well as, what's another one, mindfulness. But anyway, yeah, I'm currently working on creating more focus groups. And I know I did mention that I was gonna make a video about the different focus groups, but life has just been hectic, man. So I'm gonna do my best on still delivering on that, but hopefully in the meantime, that kind of helps you with a general idea of a focus group that you can make. But that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button before you get up out of here. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.